Howdy folks, Mitch here, and today I am bringing you this particular Dean RC7X Rusty Cooley Signature Model. I just acquired this recently and it's an absolute monster of a guitar, and there are a few things about it that make it unique compared to your run-of-the-mill RC7X model, so I thought I'd throw together a little video about it. It's a guitar of many firsts for me. It's my first seven-string guitar, it's my first one with active pickups, and my first with a locking trem system. It took a couple days to get used to it, but now that I'm used to it, um, I feel like I'm playing it more instead of like randomly fumbling and chugging about the seven strings. But yeah, anyway, let me tell you about what makes this guitar so unique. To begin with, the finish. Instead of a gloss metallic black, this one has a lovely sort of coarse feeling flat black finish. I usually don't pay super close attention to the finish when I pick up a guitar, but I can't recall playing anything really similar to it. The finish is pretty glossy around the upper horn up here, but um, that's kind of one of the last places I would expect to be worn down. Um, maybe it's an incomplete finishing job of some sort, uh, I'm, I'm not sure. But I dig this finish a lot. It makes for a really smooth and non-sticky playing experience, which is always a good thing. Uh, next sort of interesting thing are the pickups, which have been switched from the stock EMG 707s to Seymour Duncan Blackouts. I mean, that's not a huge deal. You see pickup swaps all the time, but it's still worth noting. Uh, more curious is the electronics layout. What we have here is a three-way pickup selector, a push-button kill switch, and a master volume. That layout isn't that weird, but I start scratching my head when I compare it to the standard RC7X or the other Rusty Cooley models, because all of those have a single volume and a blade switch. So I was confused until I opened up the electronics cavity to look back there and I saw that the blade switch slot had been filled in and up top, I guess it's been finished over as if it never existed. I mean, whoever did this modification, they did a really, really good job, but I don't, I don't know what they have against blade switches. I, I think they're all right, but anyway. The final weird thing is the headstock logo. After looking through numerous, numerous pictures online of other different Cooley models. I couldn't find one that had both a rosewood fretboard and a black headstock logo. Um, if this was done as an aftermarket mod, I am very, very impressed by it. It's very well done, and it adds nicely to the blacked out sort of aesthetic that this guitar has, um, besides the inlay and the uh, obnoxious looking toilet paper that I stuff up here under the strings. Otherwise, I think it's appointed with the normal stuff, an alder body, a three-piece maple neck, rosewood fretboard with 24 frets, and a 25 and a half inch scale. I personally am a massive fan of this headstock. Um, it's, I remember seeing it first um, when I started playing guitar on the Dean, or on the Dean Dave Mustaine signature VMNT. Um, I thought it was the coolest looking headstock ever, and I still do. It's not over the top, like, pointy or anything like other, you know, metal guitars. Uh, it's just really, really elegant looking, yet still being super badass. I love it. Um, but the Floyd, the Floyd I'm not really sure about. It's some sort of low profile licensed model car called the TRS7 Pro. I'm not finding much about it online, so if you have any information about it, I would be, I would appreciate that very much. That just about wraps this up. Um, if you enjoyed this, feel free to like and subscribe as I do post gear-related videos every now and then if this is the sort of stuff you like to see. Alright, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.